Hey, hopefully you're having a great day. My name is Bryce Tubbs. So today I just wanted to make a video. I was kind of woken up in the spur of the moment um, by a text from a significant other. And, you know, the text was kind of like, hey, I texted you like two times last night. I gave you a call. And I was like, you know, it's it just kind of funny. So I wanted to kind of share with you, which is other entrepreneurs on the channel. Maybe you're an accountant or your bookkeeper and you're trying to grow your business. And I'm just going to share about like how to focus and how to go about keeping your focus when running a business and having a life, right? Because most people, at least when you're starting your business, you, you've you been so ingrained in your life outside of work that when you start trying to grow your business, it's a little bit of a shift. Now, I'm not saying you have to give up your personal life by any means. I'm just saying there is a way that you have to augment your life in order to fit your personal life as well as your business. So your business can actually um, grow to a place to where it can replace whatever hours you're spending at your job. So number one, okay, so how to focus. So the first thing you have to start focusing on, number one, is after a long day of work, okay? Now, for most people, this is extremely challenging because because work can really drain you, especially if you're in, you know, the financial side. Maybe you're a bookkeeper. Maybe maybe you're a CFO. Maybe you're a financial analyst. Maybe you are a um, uh, manager. Maybe you are a director of finance. I don't really know because I'm not sitting in front of you. But oftentimes our jobs are, are really, really, really intense, especially if you're working more of like a um, um, a kind of ment mental type of job where you're thinking a lot throughout the day because that just drains a lot of energy. Right, most people, if they're working more of like like a manual job or like they're um, you know doing stuff it, with their body, it tires out their body. But then they can just go at night because their brain is still fresh, right? But with someone like us, oftentimes we don't have that kind of luxury. So the number one thing is you need to be able to um, just try and conserve your energy as much as possible during work, especially if you're starting your business on the side. Then when you come home, if you can find some time, take about a 30 minute power nap. Um, some people have trouble doing this because some people have trouble falling asleep. I personally can fall asleep very, very quickly. I've trained myself to do that over a number of years because I know that anytime I have some downtime, I need to recharge and I need to get a refuel so that I can be inside the game a lot longer and I can work later if I want to. Um, these days, I generally don't work super late. Um, Generally, I get off work around like um, about 6, 6.30 and then I'm free to kind of enjoy the dinner or dessert or whatever I'm kind of doing. But it's it's a weird thing because I used to work until about 8 p.m. and people would always be like, why are, you, why are you doing this? Like, you run a business. You don't have to work that late. And I'm like, well, it's just kind of fun, right? Because at least for me, when I'm running like a, a digital, um, I have two digital businesses. I have my accounting firm and I have my um, online coaching slash mentorship program, right? And it's almost like playing a video game all day long. And I don't know if maybe when you're growing up you didn't like playing video games. I know that I did for for a season of my life. Um, but nowadays when you're on the computer, you're on the Zoom. It's it's kind of like and even like like a camera. I'm like literally the star of like a, a virtual TV show that I make and I control, right? So it's just fun all day long that we're kind of doing. Now that doesn't mean that it doesn't ever get overwhelming or sometimes it gets stressful. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that it's a very very kind of fun lifestyle to have, especially if when you were getting started like I did. It took so long for me to get it off the ground that it was just like once it got off the ground it's like I don't want to stop this thing I want to see how far I can go but that's number one okay so now you have to realize too another thing to focus on is how to ignore like um, kind of family friends and just random calls that come to you throughout the day so a good example this is um, Maite she, she was one of my students and inside the mentorship program and her biggest hang-up was she would have like friends family um, aunts, uncles, neighbors, um, cousins, ex-boyfriends calling her throughout the middle of the day and they would always just want to talk and it's like you know she at that point she was a real estate agent by day she was um, you know um, a young lady by evening and then she had a accounting and bookkeeping business at, in the nighttime. So throughout this day, she had a lot of open spaces. So she could have actually been running her accounting business during the day, at least a little bit in between like hours and break times at, at her job. But since she was always getting hit up by friends and family, it was causing her to really waste a lot of valuable time. So the one thing you need to do is you need to start time boxing for when is an appropriate time for you to speak to a family or friend and let them know every single time they call that either you ignore it and say, hey, can I call you back at this time? Make sure they know there's a specific time. And over time, they're going to start really understanding, okay, if I, if I want to speak to um, XYZ person, I have to call them at 12 o'clock because other than that, they don't respond. 
and just keep training and training and training and training. And at first, it might seem hard, right? You're going to have people saying, why are you ignoring my calls? But as long as you can get back to them within that specific time that we, we just uh, scheduled, then they generally understand. And you just keep reminding them, hey, you know, I'm running my business, so I have to make sure that I can call you during these specified times. The same thing as, as when you're running your job, right? Oftentimes, if, if you have like a young family, um, they like to call you randomly throughout the day. But if you keep reminding them, hey... I'm kind of working at this. I generally have meetings between one to four. I have um, you know, a morning meeting at nine to 11. So they know, okay, cool. So I can call between 12 and one, or I can call at five, or I can call at six, and then it allows you to be able to focus on it. So just treat your, your business and your day the same way you treat um, your work, where it's non-negotiable. You can't be interrupted during that time period. Which next brings you down to the next thing, right? So either dating, dealing with significant others, dealing with a spouse, right? And uh, I personally don't have a spouse. However, I do have a significant other. Um, and I've dated a lot throughout the last seven years that I've owned both of my businesses. Now, the, the, the challenge, right, is if you're, if you're dating someone who's more, I call it like civilian, where, you know, they're, they work a nine to five, they have no ambition for running a business, or, you know, they just want to support their family, and they don't really, you know, that are really career um, driven as much, right? Then you're going to have a hard time when you first start your business, kind of just let them know that, hey, you're not going to be seeing me as much as what you usually do, because I need the extra, you know, two hours. Unfortunately, you know, like, I'm trying to grow my business, so I can be sitting there on the couch with you, um, on my computer, but I'm not going to be as present with you as what I, I once was, right? Because I have to go and get this thing off the ground. And at first, you're going to run into, you know, a little bit of, of um, contention in some cases. In a lot of cases, you won't you won't have to, right? Because um, oftentimes, like, if your partner really trusts you and you guys have been together for a long time, um, then they really understand that, you know, this is what you're trying to do. But I would just keep reminding them, hey, I'm, I'm trying to do this for both of us. I'm trying to take this to the next level. I'm trying to make sure that if I can just sacrifice for this season, you just let me have three months of, of hard sacrifice, I'll be able to spend more time with you because I can actually quit my job and then I can, um, you know, be with you um, um, fully in the evening because I'll be able to work my business during the day, right? There, there is some pains and some growing pains that have to occur. Now, that doesn't mean that this is hard, right? Because a lot of people will hear like all the stuff that like they have to give up which, I mean, it's just a little bit of time. You just take about one to two hours extra a day that you can just give to your business. That's really all you need. For If you do that for about a year, you'd be tremendously surprised with the results. Like, this stuff does not take a long time, especially if you're doing the right activities. What it does take, though, is discipline to do the right activities. Um, now, if you don't really know what it takes to grow your business, then it, it is going to take you a lot longer. And that's why I see people spending, like, five hours a day because they just don't know what they're really doing. So if you, if you want to avoid all those mistakes, you want to know exactly what you need to do, I would recommend you just click on the link inside the description below to book a call with me. Um, in the call, we're just going to take a look at where you are, where you want to go. If I think it's like a good fit for my program and how I can help you out, and I'll make you an offer, um, hopefully an offer that you can't refuse, as they say in the movies. But hopefully um, I'll see you on that call. If not, you know, that's okay too. Um, I'll talk to you um, in the future, and let's kind of get back to the video. So, right, the key thing with, with significant others is setting proper expectations, okay? It's really an expectations game, because if they know, hey, this is what you said in the beginning, then you can keep kind of referring back to, hey, remember when we said this, remember when we said this? Like, nothing's changed, it's been the exact same thing, I'm the same person. But one thing that also starts to kind of creep into into the mind where a lot of people don't really know this because um, once you start growing your business right you're gonna be making a lot of money um, in some cases it can happen a lot faster than what you think right because you can go from like um, let's say your business um, and we're not working together you did twenty thousand dollars your first year in business and you finally figured out and now you're making you know a hundred thousand dollars a year okay cool but then now remember it's a recurring business so the people you get from year two are also still staying with you and you're doing the same activities pretty soon you're at two hundred fifty thousand dollars three hundred thousand dollars per year right and then there comes this um this point to where people in your life, both your friends, family, significant others, start saying like, well, when's, when's enough enough? How much money do you need? Or money is not the most important thing. Or you love money too much. And it's like, don't love money too much. And it, it's, it's funny, right? Because a lot of, most, most of America has been trained to be, what they say, like what the, they used to have this acronym with jobs, like J-O-B, just over broke right and people are always like sitting kind of at baseline generally just a little bit above baseline 
right? So sometimes they, ha they might have like a thousand dollars, two thousand, five thousand dollars in their bank account. Um, but they say like the average American is about, if they had a one, a twelve hundred dollar expense, um, an unexpected twelve hundred dollar expense, it would actually break them financially, right? So whenever someone asks me like, how much money do you need? It's like, well, one, I don't know. How do you know? Right? Because you never know what you need until you need it. You never know um, how much food is enough until a tornado rips through your refrigerator and now you guys are, are now everyone's stranded and you have to share the same food with like your entire neighborhood or your entire um, city if you live in the city. You never know, like need, need is, a bad, is a bad way to think about life. You should never try and go just for what you need, right? Because you never know and you always underestimate how much you need too. Think about it. Um, there was a lady who came to me and she, she had been like um, in an accident with her son and her son was um, really struggling and like they racked up $2 million in medical bills. And the son was, was unable to work anymore because like it, it took really, really, really um, a bad deal for him. So that's $2 million. Did she have $2 million in the bank? No. Right? So it's like, how much do you really need? You don't know until you need it. So you might as well try as hard as you can to put yourself and your family in a position to where you never have to worry about money again. Right? Because it's, it's just like, it's just a weird kind of thing where <laughs> it's, it's a weird thing. Um, and I would never have expected that, right? Because like when I didn't have money, the only thing I focused on was having money. And then most people, once they start getting a certain amount of money, they stop thinking about money completely. It's, it's the same thing with like education. A lot of people like they will um, spend most of their life trying to get educated, right? So they go to high school, middle school, college. But as soon as they get their degree, um, some people go on to get their master's or PhD, but the average person stops learning. It's the same thing with money. It's like, you know, they try and get a certain amount, they try and get their business to a certain point, and then they stop thinking about money. And that can be a really, really interesting way to live for a lot of people. But for like someone like myself, I'm like, hey, I'm trying I'm trying to get as much as I can. I'm trying to get as put as much away as I can. Like, um, because I had to t I had to sit down with my significant other recently and I was like, hey, you know, I have to be in bed by a certain time every single night. Like for me personally, my, my sleep schedule is like I, I can wake up moderately early. But if I go to bed 30 minutes later than usual, even later than that, I am dead for the next day. And it's very hard for me to be able to consistently grow the business if I am dead. Which, you know, does kind of show that there is a weakness in my company where I am the primary driver of um, business, right? Um, unfortunately, that's just how I've set it up right now. I do have VAs that do a lot of the tasks, but as far as like sales, um, you know, it is still pretty heavy on me, you know, building relationships and actually talking to people in the consultation calls. Probably six months to a year from now it won't be like that, but at this moment in time when, you know, we're trying to grow really aggressively, you know, that's kind of, of where we're at. Next, it's like, hey, I'm not always responses to phone calls during the day. Like, um, one pro tip for entrepreneurs is if you can actually put your phone on silent, then, or even on airplane mode. Hmm. Yeah, when you put your phone on airplane mode, you can't get distracted. Right? The less distractions you have in your day, the more efficient you're going to be when you're actually growing and when you're working. <clears throat> and then another thing is like, hey, I can't have people, I can't have people in my life saying money doesn't matter. Okay? That, that's one of the most, the most, um, um, it kind of withers away at your ability to go and grow. Because everybody's saying it, generally belief comes through hearing, so the more that you hear something, the um, more likely you are going to be to believe it, and you're going to actually start taking that on yourself. So say, hey, if you start saying that stuff, like, we got to go, because um, unfortunately for me, like, like uh, my, my dreams are, are worth a lot, right? Um, I, I'm kind of at the point in my life where I'm, I'm trying to go and hit a certain goal. I'm trying to go and hit, like, an eight-figure business um, over the course of the next, like, ten years. So I, I got to make sure things are in place that we keep building and building and building at a sustainable rate, right? Because you don't want to go from like zero, get to six figures, and then go to eight figures. You'd rather go from like zero to six, six maybe to seven, maybe about one to two years at seven, and then try and go to eight because you know your business can handle it. And you're not just going to like malfunction and just like be a burning star. So we have to.
to make sure certain things are in place, especially if you're an entrepreneur. If you're just if you're in the civilian mode, you know it's it's not quite the same because you're trying to build more of a career and your job is to be able to climb the ladder and really learn like that. But when you're starting a business, it's almost like you have to build a house from scratch. And every single time that you want to you know go to that next level, you have to build a new house. It's or 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 it's like you're expanding on the existing one that you have. But if you it, yeah, it's actually more like you're expanding on the existing house you have. Now, if your foundation at any one of those points, let's say you have a six-figure house, now you're building on for the seven-figure house. If the seven-figure house is built on a crummy foundation, it's going to cause the eight-figure house that you're going to build on top of it to crash into the six-figure house, and then it's going to cause you to actually have no house. So you have to make sure everything is kind of set up correctly from the start. Now, hopefully this video has been kind of helpful about just talking about focus and kind of like, like the day in the life of a... Um, of an accounting or a bookkeeping professional who's trying to grow their business. So um, if you want some help growing your business, like you've been kind of watching some of my videos, you, you've seen, hey, Bryce, you're really good at helping people out. I want to make sure that I can go and reach my goal too so you can finally have control in your life and not feel like you know, you're know you at the mercy of life. I recommend you go ahead and click on the link um, inside the description below to book a call with me. Um, because yeah, like this this stuff does not have to be hard. You can go and reach your goal in a very short period of time. It's just you need to know exactly what you need to do and you need to 